Let's cover the updates to Stacking Suite and Mosaic Master, including C-Star use. Welcome to SETI Astro. Quickly before we get going on the, the big changes, I do want to say I've gotten a lot of submissions now on uh, the little benchmark tool, and I think that's just, just amazing. I also added a total CPU GPU score, which is uh, really just kind of the reciprocal of all the average times kind of added together and scaled such that my computer registered a one. Uh, so here's my two runs, a 1.02 and a 0.911. So depending on your score over here, you can see how much faster or slower your computer is than, than the computer I'm using. The current, uh, the current leader right now is this individual right here. Uh, but no, no surprise, they have a i9 13900K and an RTX 4090. So, so don't feel bad if you can't uh, outperform that individual's particular machine. If you haven't upgraded, be sure to get version 2.12.8 on my website, setiastro.com, under Astro Programs. There have been a number of changes under the hood within stacking and mosaic, so I, I did want to cover them. There's been a lot of questions out there. Probably easier just to put out a, a quick video here. So under Stacking Suite now, you will see that the first tab says Convert Non-Fits Formats. If you have fits, whether they be bared or debared or whatever, it, do it doesn't matter. You can use those directly in your darks, flats, lights, and image integration. For darks, flats, and lights, those tabs is going to keep them in the raw fits format with, with no debayering. That way your dark subtraction, your flat division, all that will be at the pixel per pixel level. And then during image integration is where it's going to sense if there's a bare pattern and if it needs to do the debayering. If you have camera raw files, you're going to have to do the, the conversion here first. So let's just run through a quick example with some fits files. I'm going to add, add some dark files. All right, I added the darks. They're right here. This uh, particular user also took a series of zero second darks uh, under this bias folder. Uh, so I'm going to add all these as well. And now you can see there's the, I guess they were a, a thousandth of a second. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, turn those darks into master darks. And it's going to create a... Uh, Master Dark for the 90 second exposures and then the very short exposures. Okay, and now you can see it created two different uh, Master Darks for us, a 0 second and a 90 second. And now in flats, I'm going to click add flat files. Here were the flat files taken. And you can see right away it's already assigned the 0 second darks to use with those flat files. And I'm just going to say turn those flats into master flats. All right, and now it saved our, our master flat for us. And now under lights, I'm going to click add light files. And here was the, the lights that were sent in. And now they've all been added. And you can see that it's going to assign the master dark of 90 seconds and the master flat. It's always going to be a good thing to enable cosmetic correction. And depending on whether you want a pedestal applied or not, uh, if you're using narrow band filters, I highly recommend a pedestal. If you're not using narrow band filters and you're shooting broadband, there's usually no reason to add a pedestal. And then I'm just going to say calibrate light frames. And you can see in the stacking folder, it has a master calibration files. Here's the darks and the flat. Also calibrated images. And I wanted to show you, this is one of the calibrated uh, files. It's still... It's still bayered, right? We didn't debayer it yet. So all the dark subtraction and flat division was um, done to the to the raw fits. Now we can click over to image integration, and it's gonna it's gonna put all our calibrated files in there for us. And I'm just gonna click register and integrate the images. Now it's at this point, it's going to debayer them, measure them, do the registration do the normalization and the stacking. So this is the, the big workhorse here um, for actually doing all of that. There's also been a number of changes to the stellar alignment in the stacking suite. It now uses the Astro Align library to do the first two passes to try to quickly and very efficiently align all the images. And then if there's still any images that aren't in alignment, it goes into a little more slower 
but more robust uh, method of detecting stars and using Delaunay triangulation and ransack methods to uh, try to iterate the convergence of an alignment. And then after all that, if they're still not in alignment, it rejects them. And usually that happens due to uh, poor image quality. And that's why you want those removed from your final stack anyways. I'd also like to mention that the registration and alignment portion is the most time consuming of the stacking. So if anybody has any good ideas or methods for me to try or other other Python libraries I could utilize to speed up the process, let me know. You can see after the first two passes, a huge majority of the frames are skipped because they're now within sub-pixel precision from the actual reference frame. And then we move on to actually doing our own triangulation with uh, some ransack iterations to get the others to come into alignment. And then if those fail to come into alignment, that's when they're actually rejected. All right, and then after it's done aligning everything, it's gonna go ahead and uh, do the stack. In this case, it essentially culled uh, about half the files. All right, and it's uh, done saving. So let's go ahead and just open it up. And you're gonna to wanna to crop out the stacking artifacts right away. And here's here's the simple auto stretch, right? So it's just our, our, our final stacked image with uh, just an auto stretch, nothing, nothing done on it. The other big change that has happened is under Mosaic Master, there's a C star mode. So this is for all the uh, robotic alt as telescopes out there right now. Um, it's a it's a quicker way to stack and align all those frames because you guys are taking, you know, hundreds and, and thousands of those frames and they may be over a broader mosaic. So let's just go ahead and add some uh, C star images. All right, I added a bunch of uh, C star images here, and it's important that they have this uh, WCS. So as you're taking images with C star, it should be recording the uh, world coordinate system, you know, the, the position in the sky where it's uh, recording those images. And that's gonna be important. The first thing it's gonna do is roughly position um, one after the other after the other uh, based on where in the sky it thought it was pointing and then do the stellar alignment from there. It's also gonna try to find the, the best center image as the, as the base of the Mosaic. And again, you don't have to debay or do anything. It, it's just going to handle all of your fits just fine and just click align and create mosaic. And then you're going to see it's going to start the registration process. It's going to debay the reference frame and then start the stellar alignment. And you're going to see it's going to start running through um, astro aligning everything. And then if it fails the initial astro alignment, uh, it's going to remember that and then on its second pass through, it's going to try to realign those failed ones, right? Because as you're adding more and more images to a mosaic and building it up, maybe one of your images actually don't fit on the mosaic yet, so it can't align to it. Uh, so after it builds out the mosaic more, then it's going to go back through and do a second pass and see if it could fit in any of those other ones that, that had failed, right? Just kind of like building a puzzle, right? Okay, and then when it's done, uh, it has the mosaic here. You could actually just close this window and then click Save to Image Manager. It's going to go ahead and actually uh, re-show you the, the final mosaic, but more importantly, it, it pushes it to the Image Manager here for us. And then if you click, you know, Fit to Image Preview, you can see it's built up with, with all the uh, images we fed into it. It would be then at this point you'd have to... Uh, choose how or what you actually want to crop right a lot of the time the sea star mosaic isn't going to be exactly what you were um what you were hoping for but you know it's what what you have with that particular instrument and as always if you're still having uh issues or questions uh it's always best just to hop over to my discord uh there's quite the active community even when i'm uh out traveling for business or something there's there's always somebody hanging around in there that is is quick to quick to jump on answers if they know it and uh the community really just helps each other out too so hope everybody gets some use out of the uh the new updates here please comment like and subscribe